What's up? Welcome back. So today's video was going to be, well, uh, something completely different. I was going to do, well not really that different, but I was going to do a, a review on this Oris uh, 360 AO that I think looks pretty awesome. But uh, as everything, I can't just make a simple review video. I got to print something out that I thought up of. And uh, well, that's taken a long time because, well, it's the same size as this AIO, but I have to print it in two pieces. And you know how long 3D printing takes. So wait on that. So in the meantime, I figured, you know, I haven't really talked about my printer that I use. I know a lot of you out there want to get into 3D printing. I know some of you have even bought the printer that I have through the links I have in my Amazon uh, affiliates program. So I figured we'd go down, check out my printer. I talked to you a little bit about it, what I like, what I don't like, and that if I think it's something worth getting, if you're getting into 3D printing or just looking for another cheap printer, is the, the TiVo Tarantula Pro, the one I have, worth getting at all? And I'm not a 3D printing expert, I think you probably all know that, but I can give you like a noob's perspective um, if you're getting into 3D printing, and uh, hopefully that'll help some of you guys out. So let's go downstairs in my basement where I hide my printer because I don't like listening to it print all day long because I use it quite a bit, and we'll take a look. So welcome to the basement. I've been down here once before in that like uh, making the YouTube studio and I made my upstairs better into a YouTube video studio dealio. But as you can see, things are a little messy. Uh, this week my parents were here, my brother were here. We started uh, finishing my basement, which is a big project in and of itself. I didn't really make any videos about it because I didn't know if you guys would care that much to see. But either way, hopefully this whole deal will be finished soon-ish. Uh, I'll let you know in some update video in the future. But anyway, here's the printer. This is where I hide it down here because I don't have to hear it print all day long. So let's talk about it. So again, let me start by saying I am not a 3D printing expert. So if you're looking for like an in-depth analysis on this 3D printer, you might be disappointed. But if you're a printing noob like myself and you're just wondering if this is going to make a good first printer or another cheap printer to get, well, it might be able to help. This, if you didn't know, is the TiVo Tarantula Pro and it has a build space or a build volume of 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters tall and is compatible with PLA, uh, ABS, PET, PETG, wood, PVA, and flexible filaments with like the Metal Pro extruder. I'm using PLA Plus. The maximum extruder temperature for this extruder that comes with it is 240C and the bed is also heated and it ranges in temperatures from 60 to 110 degrees Celsius. This printer has a positional accuracy of one millimeter in Z and 0.05 in X and Y. And this printer uses, you know, just the standard 1.75 diameter filament. This is more PLA plus in green. And it comes with the normal 0.4 millimeter nozzle. For print speeds, this printer tops out at 150 millimeters a second. Although I normally only print at 60 millimeters a second. That's what this is currently printing at. And that's kind of what I think Cura normally defaults to. So I just kind of stuck with it. But when I got this printer, I really had no idea what to expect. Up until owning this thing, I'd really never owned any 3D printers. I've only had experience using the ones I had at work, which are quite a bit more expensive. Like the one I have in our, like the one we have in our lab, for example, uh, retails for like right around $25,000. So knowing how expensive it was and what kind of prints came off it, when I looked at this thing for 200 bucks, I really didn't expect too much. But I'm happy to report that although this printer is orders of magnitude cheaper than the one I have at work, the quality isn't really all that different. Just take a look. So this right here is ABS plastic and this came off the printer I'm talking about at work that retails for $25,000. And it's really not too much different than this thing. So this is another fan I'm working on for a different video. And I printed this on this printer with that green filament you see right there at points 0.15 layer resolution and when you look at them I mean yeah this this is better obviously but this isn't too far behind I mean it's not really that bad especially considering it's $200 worth of printing printing expertise versus 25,000 now this tarantula pro um, is a DIY kit so that means you're gonna have to put it together it just comes in pieces and I know that sounds like it might be a deal breaker but it really 
it really isn't as bad as it sounds. Everything came really well packaged. Everything was nice and labeled. All the screws were in a specific bag with a specific letter or number. And there's a build video online that I used that did a really good job showing you what goes where, how to put it together, how to calibrate it. And it just did an overall well, like a good job. I think it was the same company that makes this. I think TiVo produced the video and it does a way better job than if they would have just threw some directions in the box. And I'll leave that link down below because if you buy this, you're gonna need to see something on how to put it together. And this is the best video that I think there is to figure out how to put it together. Now the printer is constructed of mostly aluminum so everything is you know extruded aluminum there's some aluminum brackets uh, some bent steel i think it is there is some 3d printed stuff like the end the end bracket for the ball screws 3d printed but everything is pretty darn sturdy i haven't, haven't had any issues in the past four months of running this thing where i had to tighten up the frame because it started to loosen up the only thing i've had to do is i put some lubricant on the ball screw and i've tightened up the belts as they kind of stretched out as they were used but that's pretty much it. There's plenty of space in the tensioner to get that extra slack out after you've used the printer for a while. And it's literally been just running. And I use this thing a lot. Like this print right now has been going for on, I think uh, we're going on just about 23 hours. 20, no, actually probably over 24. I think I started this yesterday at 8 a.m. And currently it's like 11, one o'clock. Hopefully it's about done because I have another one of these, same exact size to print. Uh, again, so that's why we're not talking about that video today. We're talking about my printer. Um, leveling was also really easy with this. You got thumb screws, spring loaded. Uh, it talks about that in that setup video that I will link down below about leveling the bed as well. I use the paper method, which is what it recommends. But you could also buy, they make a leveling sensor that goes right on this hook, just bolts right to it, plugs in into a space that's provided. So you can literally just go straight to an automatic leveled bed if that's something you want. I personally don't have it because normally when you set the bed level, in my experience, it stays put unless you're pulling on it or messing around. But it is an option that's available if you so choose. But what I would say, one of my biggest questions was when I was considering getting a 3D printer was like, how, how hard is it to 3D print stuff? I had never, I mean, I have one at work, but I have a, I normally give it to the applications engineer and he prints it out for me. I just give him the model, say I need this. I never had one or I had to throw in the model, slice it, you know, and actually print it out. And I was like, how hard is it? And I'm happy to say that it's really, it's really actually easy. The hardest part of the whole process is really the design phase. So once you figure out how to design stuff, you simply just save it as an STL file. You put it into something like Slicer or Cura and you slice it, which generates G code. And you put it on this memory card that comes with the printer. You scroll down to print from SD card, hit the button and there it goes. So literally the hardest part is designing. And you know, as you're learning to design, you'll get better and better. And then in the meantime, if you don't have you know, good models to use yet. You can always go to thing or places like Thingiverse, which I have an account on and I always put all of my models. So if you want to download stuff that I make, you can just download the STL file, slice it and print it. But there's also a lot more mm, useful models out there like shelves, candle holders, phone holders, you know, pretty much anything you can think of. You just search it, find it, download it and print it. And then it's, it's really that easy. So one thing I do recommend doing is getting a new a new spool holder. The card does come preloaded with the G-code needed to print one and it works kinda. I didn't like it. It's supposed to just kinda sit in the extrusion but it doesn't really, I don't, I didn't, I didn't think it raised the spool up high enough. It didn't really hold it in the right position and I just didn't like it so I threw mine away but um, then I bought one of these so this is one of those spool holders where it sits on the table and you kinda set the spool in it like that and you know, in theory, you're like, that would do great because it's two bearings and some acrylic. It does good when the spool is full, but as soon as it gets light, it just pulls it right off. So I wouldn't recommend buying these either. I would recommend going to Thingiverse, finding something like what I have. So this is not really a spool holder. It's that prop balancer you've seen in other videos, but it does a really good job at holding spools. So I would find something on Thingiverse that's similar in design to this, where it just kind of holds the spooler between two legs and print that out because it'd probably do a lot better job than something like this or the one that comes with the printer itself. Print beds that comes with like a plastic, plastic adhesive print surface. So it's plastic on one side, some sort of adhesive on the other side and you stick it right to the aluminum plate. It works, but I don't know. I had issues where it stuck too good and I couldn't get the models off there. So I pulled it off and then I bought a piece of glass and I'll, I'll link this glass down below, but it's exactly the same size as my build table. I just use two of those metal binder clips to hold it on there and it does a really good job. 
Um, I like printing on glass because it makes that one side completely flat and then when it cools down, the model just simply comes right off. And to get it to stick, hairspray. Uh, hairspray works far better than anything I've tried. I've tried glue sticks, I've tried salt water, but hairspray is the winner. Just a little mist of this on a nice piece, clean piece of glass. So clean your glass, nice mist of hairspray, and I haven't had anything pop off there other than like the fan blades, but there's not really much surface area on the bottom. That's why I just use a raft and it prints good. So yeah, hairspray is the winner. Now I do, I don't know if you can see that, but I have some, if the model's really big, even though the bed's heated, I do have warping issues. Now I don't know if that's probably due that I'm printing in my basement where it's a little cooler than the rest of my house. Maybe it's better, it'll be better when I finish it. But unless you have a fully enclosed printer like the one at work that I talked about, eh, printing, warping is kind of going to be an issue. It's not as bad when I use like a raft, but then you got more crap to peel off your model. Uh, I've used brims, I don't know. I, I've never had anything not warp. I've tried different temperatures, brims, rafts, whatnot. If you have any ideas on how to keep your model from warping, uh, let me know in the comments down below because everything I've tried, just kind of something you have to live with and plan ahead when you're making, you're doing your models. Make sure that the side it's gonna be down that's probably gonna warp is not as critical to the rest of your model and it won't really matter as much other than cosmetically, but what are you gonna do? Like I said, I use PLA Plus, so this, I'll leave this link too. This is like, I don't know, I really like this stuff. I use some just regular PLA from Hatchbox, and I just didn't like, didn't like it as well as I like this PLA Plus. This is a green, I'm printing with black right now. But I really enjoy this material, and I think it does a good job. It comes in a lot of different colors. So I would recommend using this just because I've had good experiences with it in the past. But either way, if you're looking for a cheap printer, and you want to know, does this thing do a good job? Is it easy to put together? Is it easy to set up? All that is yes. I would recommend it. I wouldn't even mind having another one, but I can see where that becomes a slippery slope where you start buying more and more, which would be awesome because you have them all going at once, but probably not financially a good idea to buy just to buy a bunch of cheap printers. But if you're in the market or looking for a new printer, go ahead, get the TiVo Tarantula Pro. You won't be disappointed. It's done a good job for me in the past four months, and I've used it quite a bit. So until next time, make sure you stick around so you can see what we're uh, doing here. That'll be probably in the next video. I assume this will be done by then unless I have something fail. But stick around, check that out in the next video, and we'll see you next time.